Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers, so thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage you to share it with family, with friends, with loved ones, and with coworkers. And you can do that by copying the link on the video and pasting it to Facebook, on your email, and all your favorite social media sites. So make sure you share the good news at the end of this message. Also, I have a YouTube channel on youtube.com. It's just my name, McCabe Marshall. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel there, and you can also subscribe to Word of the Week on my website, mccabemarshall.com, at the end of this message. All right, well, the Word of the Week for this week is revival. And in today's society, what people value and what they hold as true changes over time. It's not absolute. Cultural trends change. Tastes change. What we like and dislike changes. What we perceive in the culture as right and as wrong changes. It fluctuates. It is no wonder that there are so many problems in the world that it's so topsy-turvy and not consistent. And without truth from God above, the world is a dark and lost place. The world is without light and without answers. However, as believers and as Christians, we have the true light of God, Jesus Christ, dwelling inside our hearts. We also have the Word of God, the Bible, to study and implant in our minds. We have the Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and protects us and directs our steps each day. And the key to seeing society change for the better, seeing people's lives transform on a large scale, is by praying for and experiencing true revival. And revival is restoring life. Another way put, revival is a spiritual awakening that happens when God's people come together and pray. Revival is spurred on when God's people get deep into the wells of God's word and begin standing on God's promises. Whenever the church grows stagnant, the answer is revival. This is what the psalmist prays in Psalm chapter 85, verses 6 through 7, saying, Will you, God, not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Reading your Bible more often is one way to stir up personal revival in you. If you ever feel like you are stagnant in your spiritual walk or in your faith, one way to kindle the fire afresh is by reading the Word of God. The Word of God is not like our culture. It does not change. It doesn't say one thing one day and then another thing the next day. It is not abstract and it is not undefined. It is exact and it is absolute truth. In Psalm 12 verse 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. When you read the Bible, you are filling your mind with pure words from God Most High. Those words don't just float around in your mind after you read them. Something supernatural, something spiritual happens because they're the Word of God. The more you read those words on the page in the Bible, they will begin to go down into your soul and to dwell in your heart. That's why Psalm 119.11 says, I've hid my word in your heart that I might not sin against you. And this is why it is so important to read your Bible every day. 
Revival starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with the believer. It starts with your knowledge of the Holy One and what He has spoken to us through the generations by His Word and by His Holy Spirit dwelling among His people. And Psalm 119, 130 tells us, The teaching of your Word gives light so that even the simple can understand. God always speaks in such a way that those who are listening will understand what he is saying. He's not too difficult to understand. He gets on our level to communicate to us personally. So today, I believe God wants to speak to you in a personal way. He wants to open your eyes to see and your heart to understand his word. He wants to refresh your soul and revive every area of your life with his goodness and with his salvation. Revival is the end product and result of seeking God first. Revival happens when you make God first place in your life, putting him first in everything that you do, giving honor to him. And in Psalm 62, 8, the psalmist declares, Trust in God at all times, you people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. God wants you to pour out your heart to him, to be transparent before him, to tell him what you feel. In other words, be real with God. Tell him what's on your heart. Whether it is good or bad, you can go to God with it in prayer. He can handle it. Nothing you say to him is going to surprise him. He already knows. He already knows what is in your heart. When you come clean with God, he always forgives you. He is so full of mercy and compassion and love. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8 says, In Jesus we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Experiencing God's mercy and grace is what revival is all about. Revival starts with you. It starts at an individual level. When it is passed on to others, it can grow to no bounds. The impact you can have on the people at work, at church, and at school is boundless and limitless. When you seek God, you have revival stirring on the inside of you. The more in tune with God that you are, the more God will send people onto your path of life for you to speak life into and to even spark revival in them. Revival can be characterized as a flaming fire. And Paul tells us in Hebrews 12 verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire. God doesn't just want to be a part of your life or the life of your neighbor. He wants to be more than that. He wants to be all-consuming and all-encompassing. He wants to, to surround your life with his goodness, with his power, with his presence. He wants to rule and to reign in your heart and in what you do. He wants you to break out with the good fruits of his kingdom that comes from knowing him and experiencing this fire, this revival within. You are like a fruit stand of God's goodness, always bearing fruit. You have God's favor. You have God's mercy. You have God's grace. You have everything you need in order to experience revival in your own life and see revival break out on large scale into the lives of other people. So as you seek God, praying and going deeper in the study of God's word, have an attitude of expectancy. Expect revival. Expect other people to come to know Christ. Expect your fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord to get their fire back for God. When you do this, faith rises. The fire of God will fall from heaven and consume his people. Revival will happen. 
Well, I just want to pray over you really quick that you would get this in your spirit, that revival is coming and that revival starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with the church and every believer in it. And when you have Christ abiding in your heart, God calls us to feed the inner man, to feed our spiritual muscles, to feed his spirit living in us. And the way we do that is several ways, by studying scriptures, memorizing scriptures, and standing on the word of God. It starts with praying, praying by yourself and praying with others, going to church, getting around other people who are passionate for God. That's how revival starts. So I want to pray over you that you would experience more and more revival and that it would spread to others as well. So if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just listen along as I pray over this message. Father God, thank you so much for everyone listening and watching right now. Thank you, Lord, for revival. Thank you, God, that you said you're like a consuming fire that you take over like a wildfire. You're just out of control in the sense that your spirit breaks out and knows no bounds. It can touch anyone. It can touch a Christian. It can touch a, touch a non-Christian. It can even touch people who are of a different faith with your love and with your power that comes by knowing you, Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord, that revival is coming and that revival is happening in our own life and that you are refreshing us in our work. You're refreshing us in our churches. You're refreshing us in our communities and in our our lives. Thank you, Lord, in advance for bringing revival like never before in Jesus' name. Well, I want to tell you the first step to experiencing more of God's goodness is by having a personal relationship with God's Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that there is no way to the Father except through the Son, Jesus. So if you've never received the free gift of eternal life, which comes by knowing Jesus, I just want to invite you to pray this simple prayer and ask Jesus to come and abide in your heart. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just repeat after me as I say this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, if you prayed that simple prayer, the Bible says that you are spiritually born again and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step in your faith journey is to be water baptized and get involved in a good Bible-based church and Christian community and let people encourage you in your faith journey. And read your Bible every day and learn the promises of God. Learn the Word of God and pray. Talk to God like you would your best friend. The Word says to cast your cares upon God because He cares about you. There is nothing outside of God's reach, and there's nothing that concerns you that God isn't interested in. So pray, talk to God like you would your best friend. And make sure you tell someone. Tell a pastor or tell someone you know that is a Christian. Tell a friend or someone at work or someone at school that you know that is a Christian, that you gave your life to Christ, and let them encourage you in your faith journey as well. Well, I also have a website with a lot of great resources just to help you along in your faith and inspire and encourage you. And my website is just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. And on McCadeMarshall.com, you can watch other videos just like this one with different messages under the Word of the Week tab. And each message will just inspire you and encourage you and teach you a different lesson from past weeks. And also I'm a writer and I email and mail out newsletters every three months free of charge for all my subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to receive my newsletters, you can do that under the newsletters tab. I'd be more than happy to mail you my latest newsletter. And I have a couple of books out. And the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. And Tasting the Goodness of God is a 31-day daily devotional I wrote to help you learn how to spend time with God each and every day and you do it for about a month, and that it, devotional's written so that it doesn't take long to read a devotional a day, and at the end of each devotional, there's thoughts for the day, so it'll challenge you, and you can also journal and write in response to the questions, so make sure you check that out at the end of this message, and I also have another book out called Breathe, and Breathe is a little longer and a little more in-depth. It goes deeper in the Word, and Breathe is about God breathing new life into your God-given dreams. 
because God has had a plan for you from the beginning of time to fulfill a great purpose and calling from Him. So Breathe is all about that and has prayers at the end of every chapter that you can pray over yourself and over your loved ones. So make sure you check those books out and you can order those. I'd be more than happy to sign them and ship them to you. So check out McCadeMarshall.com. All right, well, in closing, I want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare you're going to experience revival like never before. As you spend more time in the Word of God, your mind is going to be filled with the knowledge of God. You are equipped to do all God has called you to do and become all you were made to be. There is nothing you cannot accomplish with God's help. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you.